Doktor! Tibetan and Lowest Plateaus merged with Sichuan Province through the Yangtze and Yellow Rivers. The past connects to the future along the curvature of the Earth. The story begins in Gansu Province. The Ganan Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture is the closest snow-capped plateau to the mainland. To the west reside the best grasslands in Asia and the source of the Yellow River in the Bayan Har Mountains. After accumulating enough water, it makes its first big bend and flows to the heart of the Chinese civilization. Hill pastures and mountains lie to the east, bisected by rivers. The area is dominated by farmers and herders. fight between man and nature continues on the grasslands surrounding the first bend of the Yellow River. The villagers live in harmony with nature. As time goes by, some of the locals have seized the opportunity to embrace the future, whilst others struggle not to let go of the past. Dreams occur in the most unlikely of places. A Tibetan elder and a young hand male are both enchanted by the beauty of this place. forefathers sacrificed everything to help the Red Army win the Chinese Revolution and change their country's destiny. The crew will travel to Ganan, a prefecture covering seven counties and a city. Their journey will take them 2,000 meters above sea level to experience the lives of the locals. Shi'aha County is located in northwestern Ganan. It's named after the Grand Shi'aha River, a tributary of the Yellow River, which originates here. Ancient castle ruins flank both sides of the river. Its primary pastures are the Sungka and Ganja grasslands. The brilliant La Brun Monastery continues to provide Buddhist serenity. The county was established back in the Western Han Dynasty and was once part of the prosperous Tea Horse Road. Shiaha was the political, cultural, and religious center of Gansu and Xinhai, and the regional seat of Ganan. The story begins at the octagonal city in northwest Shiaha County. This is the 
。说我们八九村有四个门，东南西北，这是南门的门槛。那那那时候大门是木木木嘛，木木开的时候就这个里面转嘛。Dan Jia is a local official responsible for protecting historic relics. The things he guards are quite unusual. The octagonal city lies beneath the white rock cliffs. The city walls were built into a rarely seen cross shape. A barbican was built beyond the city walls with winding paths to thwart cavalry attacks. Outside the city was a moat and outer wall. Tombs and ancient castles are scattered throughout. Tibetan herders moved to the city after the original occupants left. Apart from being a strategic military garrison, the octagonal city was probably an important trading post. Local governments fiercely defended it against invading nomads throughout history. The villagers have found many valuable coins with dates ranging from the Northern Song Dynasty over 900 years ago to the Qing Dynasty over 100 years ago. The Taiping Heavenly Kingdom and mid 20th century. Xiaha County and the ancient castle in Ganan have all the characteristics of a military fortress at the crossroads of agriculture and nomadic civilizations. Archaeologists are about to excavate the octagonal city in order to reveal its mysterious past. Throughout history, Ganan has been a corridor for migration. The diversity of attire pays homage to the region's transient past. Twenty-four ethnic groups occupy Ganan, though the majority are Tibetan, Han, and Hui. They integrate as they have for centuries. Each ethnic group has its own cultural characteristics and spiritual beliefs, but tolerance has ensured their survival. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Every year in the first month of the Tibetan calendar, the most important event of the year takes place in the Labrun, the Grand Prayer Ceremony. It's not only a celebration for local Tibetans, but also an important tourist attraction. Perform the Vajra dance to expel monsters and pray for good fortune and peace in the year ahead. The merchants and armies who once dominated the region have been replaced by swarms of tourists.
The emergence of tourism as a leading industry has even produced some Tibetan entrepreneurs. Gong Chua Sang Dan's Tibetan style hostel is located close to the Labrung Monastery. It's quite popular with tourists. Having seen improvements in the local transport, he invested a small fortune to expand his hotel. When he was in second grade of junior high, he became a monk. He learned a lot about Tibetan literature and Buddhism whilst at the temple, but left in his 30s to make a living as a writer. He started the business with royalties from his writing and money his brother had made from Tibetan Tung Ka painting. After a rocky start, business is good. But this is all just part of the dream. In Xiaha and throughout Ganan, the dreams of the younger generation are a little different. Wan Ma Sai Rung lives in a village in Xiaha County. His parents and siblings are all livestock herders. He is the only university graduate in the village. Uh, Fanyu 那个时候我就是很有一个很大的野心去拍电影 After graduating, Wan Ma started a film production company with 30,000 yuan from his family and a small donation from a herdsman friend. He managed to finish his second short movie, The Barley Has Grown Mature. He reaped the fruits of his labor when the film won a prize at the Beijing College Student Film Festival. 当然,这个电力上,就是,当时提到我的名字,妈妈这样的时候,其实特别紧张,就是怎么上去和自己怎么站得住,没搞清楚。When Ma quit his job as a teacher and threw himself into his film company, it became a constant source of worry for his parents. Wan Ma is contemplating his third short film, Beyond the Hill. Visitors to the monastery only see the monks chanting and reading. But it is a living institution. Over the past three centuries, it has produced many eminent monks and much talent. It was founded in 1709 by the first Jam Young Living Buddha. Most monks were also students. The temple is comprised of six schools. With Buddhism as a foundation, they also teach karma, Tibetan linguistics, literature, astronomy, Tibetan medicine, music, dance, handicrafts, and calligraphy.
Through the painstaking efforts of generations of monastic scholars, La Brong has now become the leading world center for Tibetan studies. However, things used to be very different. At the end of the Yuan Dynasty, over 600 years ago, many Tibetan monasteries were lacking both discipline and integrity. The monks cared more about themselves than Buddhism. The survival of Tibetan Buddhism was under threat. Religious reformer Song Karpa established a new monastic management system and formed the Galu Yellow Hat sect, which became known for its strict rules. The impact of Song Karpa's reforms was far reaching. They shaped today's image of Tibetan Buddhism. The La Brung Monastery is one of the six major monasteries of the Galug sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Gong Chua Sangan aims to spread Tibetan art and culture throughout China and the rest of the world. He started his career with Tung Ka, focusing on this Tung Ka exhibition center. Tangkatanan 比如说我们现在这个有一些办了一个国际青年旅馆，青年旅馆很多比伯克，他们也喜欢藏族的文化，然后藏族的汤卡，包括藏族的佛教在内的，很感兴趣。Many Tibetan entrepreneurs wish to promote their culture. Gong Chua Sangdan's ideal is gradually being realized. Student La Mao Sao is about to celebrate her 16th birthday. Today is a coming of age ceremony. What are her dreams as an adult? Chitan Yeah, 
сейчас. Они сам. Ну, он алем был сами. Амо, чудо не ханандю нандук. Моян Лаши, Зай Джиши, Хода Нубер, Джан Джи Джиху, Шиву, Дуй Вода Ючун, Синда Нечу, Чифа. Джиши Моян Лаши, Джан Джан Джи 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 Дж Times change everything. The herdsmen are slowly coming to terms with the idea of sending their children to school. There are bound to be other youngsters among them with grand ambitions, like Wan Ma and Gong Chua. These children are the seeds of hope for Ganan's future. This is a story told by the people of Ghanaian about their hometown, their dreams, their lives, and their destiny. Having left Shia Ha, Film crew enters Ma Chu and Lu Chu in the Ga Nan Tibetan Autonomous Prefecture. Who are the guardians of the grasslands at the first bend of the Yellow River? What secrets lie hidden in a landscape unchanged for thousands of years? What's going on in the minds of the people who call this place home? Where are they going? Join us for part two of the nearest snow-covered plateau.